Today we're going to talk about setting white balance on the EVA camcorder. What is a white balance? I mean, it's the most important thing you can do to make sure you're going to get accurate color reproduction in the camera. You have to set the white balance and that's what tells the camera under the current lighting conditions with, you know, daylight coming here and tungsten light here, whatever's hitting the subject, what is white supposed to look like? The camera needs to know that, especially if you're shooting in V-Log, it's about the only setting you can control for image control is to set the white balance. So you've got to set the white balance properly so the camera knows how to render color properly. How do you set the white balance? Well, on any Panasonic handheld camera, if you've used a Panasonic before, you know there's a button right about here. Yep, right there. And you press that button and the camera says AWB active, AWB set, AWB being automatic white balance. If you do that with this camera, it's gonna say invalid. I gotta tell you, this is the first question people ask me when they're using the EVA. It's like, why can't I set the white balance? Yes, it's because this is a much more powerful camcorder. Even in that step, even in just taking a manual white balance, it's a two-step process. It's a very simple two steps. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. But first, we're gonna show you the general setting of the white balance because this camera has a number of presets. The presets are pre-programmed white balance values. So in general, on conventional cameras, you'll find there's usually two presets, 3200K and 5600K. 3200K, you use that when you're in indoor lighting, tungsten lighting, you know, shop lights, that kind of thing. And 5600K, that's for when you're in daylight or under daylight colored lighting. Those are presets and they're very common and they're not usually very accurate because the presets require that your light be absolutely pure, pristine daylight or a perfect reproduction of daylight. If it's not, if the color temperature is a little bit off, the colors aren't gonna be quite right with the presets. So the EVA includes a 3200 and a 5600 and a lot more presets too. It's got a 4300 in there for mixed lighting conditions, half daylight, half tungsten. It's got a 6300 in there when you're maybe later in the day or in shadows and the light's a little bit bluer. It's got all that. And when you set the white balance on the camera, you choose from a list of those presets. So let me show you how to do that. First thing, first and easiest way to do it, let's go to the home screen. And from the home screen, Lower right corner, there's a box that tells you what your current white balance is. It says 3200K. You press that, and now it brings up the menu, lets you choose among the list. So you can scroll up and down, you can see 6300, 5600, 4300. Once you choose that, that's what it configures the camera's white balance to be. You can get at it in other ways too. You can just go into the menus, under camera settings, go into the white menu, and then you can choose to select the white balance there in the value options. That's where you can also add to the list. The, the list that it comes with is not all that there is. You can add your own custom white balance to that. When you go to add, it lets you choose your color temperature. A lot of cameras let you do this. They set the color temperature. You can, you can lower the Kelvin or raise the Kelvin. The lower you set it, the redder it expects the light to be. The higher you set it, the more it's moving towards the blue spectrum which is fine and dandy and great, but I always used to hate setting the color temperature that way because, you know, people would say, well, you know, I'm using a 5600K light, so just set the color temperature to 5600. It'll look perfect. And sometimes it did if they're using a high quality light. And sometimes it didn't look very good because even if the color temperature is right, that's not the whole story. That's only on the red to blue scale. There's also a whole range that you can manipulate on the green to magenta scale, green to purple. You know, if you're using a low CRI light and it's putting out some nasty green spikes in there, you can dial that out in the camera. Once you set the color temperature, then you get to set the green magenta axis shift too. So a lot more powerful, a lot more accurate white balance that you can get. So set up your white balance, set it in the list, and then you can select from the home screen or just a simple, you can set the user toggle switch up to WB, white balance, and then as you roll the menu, it'll roll through that list and let you choose a white balance. The most accuracy I find comes with setting a manual white balance. That's what you really wanna do. And that's where you set a white card in the scene, you know, preferably where the light is hitting your subject. So ideally you'd have a, a person hold up a white card in front of their face where the light is hitting them. And that's, 
the light that you want to take a white balance on. So the camera looks at that white card, analyzes it and figures out exactly what the color temperature is and exactly what the green to purple offset is and calculates that and stores it in your list for you. That's the most accurate way you're going to get a white balance. And that's what everybody wants to do when they press this AWB button and it says invalid. Well, the answer is very simple. We have to go into our list of available white balances, scroll it all the way down to the first element in the list. And that first element is called AWB memory. Once it's on AWB memory, now the AWB button on the front will work. Now it's relevant, you press the button, it says automatic white balance is active, and then it says automatic white balance. Okay, that's white balance. What about black balance? On prior cameras, it was really easy to take a black balance. On the, on the fixed lens cameras, because you just would hold the AWB button in longer, this camera doesn't work that way. It doesn't have a fixed lens, it can't automatically shut the iris, so you have to shut it for it with the lens cap. It's a really simple process. Cap the lens, go into the menus, in camera settings, scroll to the bottom of that menu, and you'll see auto black balance. Select it, and execute. It's looking at the sensor, which it knows should be 100% black because the lens is capped. But what if it's not? What if the sensor's got a little bit too much red coming off it or something like that? This will cancel that all out. And it'll give you great, deep, rich shadows when you properly black balance. So that's white balancing and black balancing on the AU EVA1. Hope you have found this informative and stay tuned to the rest of these videos for even more tips and tricks on how to use your EVA1. Panasonic.